Hi, and welcome back to the 10 square meter workshop. This is part two of my homebrew CNC machine. And our top down build, the next step, is the X axis. This is a bit beefier than the Z axis, bigger, and therefore fabricated. Coming up after this. The Y axis frame I'm going to fabricate using 12 and a half and nine and a half millimeter plate, actually half inch and three eighths. Fabricating the frame will require more precise hole drilling to take the bolts. But first I'll face off the end of the strip, which will also establish the zero. With the end mill square, I'm now going to drill and counterbore all the holes. But you've seen all that, so I'll bring you back when I'm finished. And that's it done. I just need to do the other end and both ends of the other piece. So that's the horizontals drilled. I still have to add the rails, but they don't arrive for another couple of days. The tie bars are small enough to machine all in one operation. So another day, another day or roll map. This is getting repetitive. First the centre drilled holes then the 5mm drill, followed by tapping all 11 holes. I'm saving you a lot of time with all this editing. With all four parts fitted together, it forms the x-axis frame. Yes, there's one or two bolts missing. I'm waiting for a delivery. More machining is required to produce the ball screw support plates. With mounting holes drilled, the two plates look like this. These support plates fit in on the left and right to hold the ball screws. Fitted with temporary bolts, I'm still waiting for that delivery, I can now attach the rails. With the X axis tested, I could fit the Y axis components. There's a lot of bolts in this machine, there's 45 in this plate alone. With those in place, it runs nice and freely. There's no shortage of people on YouTube who have made a CNC machine for very little money and only using hand tools. Well, all I can say is they must be mighty good at hand fitting and have lots of time to do it. All the machines aren't very accurate. Having said that, there are times when hand fitting, hand measuring is better than using machines. A case in point is the ball screw on the x-axis. Because the position in this direction is dependent on lots of different measurements throughout the build and because tolerances can be added together there's a level of uncertainty of how accurate this can be if just using numbers straight from your machine. In this case a bit of hand fitting with if necessary a level of adjustment should do the job. The purpose is of course to make the shaft run as freely as possible. Because this doesn't affect the accuracy only the smoothness I believe it's the correct approach. And here look the bolts have arrived. With the bearing blocks bolted firmly down it now turns quite nicely just on finger pressure. Looking pretty good. Time to mount the motor. The motor coupling plate is another exercise in machining on the mill, as is the motor mounting plate itself. And before you comment on the colour, that comes from a previous life. Nothing to do with me, just call it serendipity. After turning up a few spaces, the motor is mounted, as you can see. As previously, the last step is to make and mount the limit switch, stroke home switch. Well, that's two axes done, only one to go. And the next one will be a bit different. More steel and welding than machining aluminium. Don't forget to see it. Why not sign up and subscribe? See you next time.